And we are back. You're listening to Linda Pinizzato at the Hayes FM on the Condo Expert. Uh, we were just talking about different types of condominiums where there could be an entity of commercial and residential. There could be, which is basically called a mixed use condo and and basically where the stipulations are behind it and things that you should maybe pay attention to and the way everything comes down. So right now we're getting into city council and there was a zoning amendment application that had been filed through the uh, city of Toronto regarding 8187 Peter Street and this had to do with the final report. So I was just talking about underground parking and I was talking about how developers sometimes put structures out there that are very appealing to the eye and you know they cover it and I know down in Philadelphia they do. So I put a little bit of a call to action because I need everyone's help in telling me where in Mississauga we have some of these. But anyway, moving on to the recommendations. The, the TCHC Right now, that's another entity that's come to the forefront. But on this particular project, they actually have a heritage easement. And that is between 317 and 325 Adelaide, which is the Commodore building. And that has to be, that is required in this uh, complete plan that's been put forward. So the city planning, they've recommended a few different things. And we will have this posted, actually, in the COA Toronto report. And this show is not just about Toronto. I mean, we cover a lot of issues relating to condominiums here in Mississauga and pretty much all over the province, for that matter. But this one crossed my desk. And uh, I found it really, really interesting because, you know, taking it and using it as a breakdown to give you the information with respect to multi-use condominiums is invaluable because this is no doubt the wave of the future. And there's also a a different element involved with the Toronto Community Housing Corporation because affordable housing is another issue that's come to the table. And in this case, Section 37, their contribution of $1.3 million is in the form of condominium residential units on the lot to be conveyed to Habitat for Humanity Toronto or any type of other similar non-profit provider of below market ownership housing selected by the city. So basically that's what their intention is and that actually does include the reserve fund allocation and it includes the property taxes in a certain format. So in other words the units shall be provided to the same finishing standards as the market units so they're not going to be finished in any different way They will be ready for occupancy, and occupancy, as I had told everyone, is not at registration. It's when the builder has said, okay, fine, now you have to take your contract under occupancy, and that's the time when the rental whole portion of the equation comes into effect uh, until the building actually registers. And it includes five appliances. Each of the condominium apartments shall include a bicycle and a parking space, and the unit's shall be conveyed within 60 days following the registration of the development as a condominium pursuant to the Condominium Act. So therefore, conveyed. So basically, it will not be transferred over to them or conveyed over to them until 60 days after registration. So they don't really have to go through the occupancy period, which is actually very good because it would obviously be a cost involved between the occupancy and the registration, just like any other buyer in the building would have. But in these circumstances, that doesn't happen. So uh, the units are conveyed 60 days after. The question I have is how many people that purchase into this building are going to know that this is the deal that went down? Is that going to be disclosed in the sales office? Is the general public going to know about Section 37 and the $1.3 million contribution? The fact that we have a councillor that's now stepped forward with a motion on the floor with respect to advertising developments and making sure that those developments have been approved before they advertise them, maybe the municipalities now need to step it up one step further and put some kind of a restriction out there with relation to this whole Section 37, so that people know that Section 37 in a contribution of $1.3 million, which relates to the residential units in that building, 
You know, I have no objection. I think that we need affordable housing. There's no two ways about it. We definitely need it. It's uh, it's a no-brainer. But we need to be transparent. And we need to make sure that people that do want to buy in the building and are not involved in this particular program, they're just people that go to work every day, have saved some money, whether they're first-time home buyers or what the case may be, they now want to buy a condo. Well, the same way that everyone went out and checked into the vehicle that they want to buy at the car lot, they've got to do the same thing with a condominium. So the bottom line is, is that this particular building and any other ones out there that have this same kind of plan that they've put forward needs to be identified to the general public. And it can't be just lost in the paperwork of the municipalities. Now, there's some provisions on here. The city actually has put some provisions because the city, at its sole discretion, can take the cash payment of $1.3 million indexed in lieu of the housing units, such payment being due on the earlier of condominium registration of the building or within two years of the execution of Section 37 agreement to be paid to the city's capital revolving fund for affordable housing and be used for the development of affordable housing in Ward 20. So, how does that change the picture? We'll get right into that. You're listening to Linda Pinizzato of the Condo Expert at the Hayes FM. We'll be right back to give you more details on condominiums. (laughs) 